Hi, Jason Knott, and welcome to the CE Pro booth at this Cedia Expo Virtual. I'm excited to be doing our first fireside chat with a renowned individual in the industry, CEO and founder of Kaleidoscape, Chena Srinivasan. Hi, Chena, how are you doing? Hello, Jason, I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you for joining me today. So, as I mentioned, it's a fireside chat, but I don't have a fireplace next to me, and I'm certainly not Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, and you're not listening to me on the radio, or hopefully everybody's not listening to us on the radio, but we're gonna do our best. And the topic at hand we wanna talk about today is what's happening in the market, especially in the home cinema space. This has been an old standby category that has really experienced quite a resurgence given the pandemic, one of the effects of the pandemic. And so there's a lot of opportunity for integrators and a lot of trends that are causing this resurgence beyond the pandemic. And that's what Sheena and I are gonna talk about today. So let's jump right into it. You ready? Yep. Okay, so what are some of these macro trends that are driving home cinema's growth today? With the advent of DVD, um, after, the, after, after, after the transition from the VHS tapes to DVDs, I think the content owners uh, realized what an incredible opportunity they've got to satisfy the appetite of consumers that wanted quality entertainment in the comfort of their home. And um, once upon a time, I think uh, we felt like, uh, you know, home theater is something that was uh, super expensive and only for the very privileged. And uh, even at Kaleidoscape, I think uh, back uh, 16 years ago when we started uh, marketing our products and debuted our first product in the market, uh, we were very much fixated in the home theater market. And today, uh, I think we refer more to the home cinema uh, segment because the home cinema is, um, is really an experience and it could be had in a nice family room. It could be had in a multi-purpose room, a media room, or a dedicated theater. And uh, we, just, we just don't want to narrow down our focus just to a dedicated theater. Uh, the, macro, the second macro trend besides the shifting uh, preferences for consumers uh, to enjoy a great movie experience at home has been um, this incredible uh, technology improvement that has happened with uh, every successive disc technology. Um, I'm referring to the shiny disc, of course. DVDs and then the Blu-ray, and then we went from HD Blu-ray to 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, and every successive technology improvement resulted in uh, two major uh, benefits to consumers. Of course, they brought about this incredible uh, uh, experience uh, in both uh, sound and picture quality, uh, but uh, also, uh, along with that, I think came uh, the substantial decline in prices of these consumer electronics products. And so, like everything in life, I think uh, if you can make something great, more accessible to a bigger, broader market, you're going to see a big phenomenon, right? And that's what we're seeing right now is people can afford uh, a home cinema uh, for a tiny little fraction of the price uh, from two decades ago. And, uh, and I think that's another uh, big macro trend that's happening. And the third thing that I think is happening, needless to say, I think uh, streaming uh, video has been uh, uh, probably the single biggest uh, revolution that's happened in, in, in just consumer appetite for um, content. And uh, I, think, uh, I think now there are literally hundreds of streaming video sites for consumers. You have so much content now from so many content providers that uh, the problem is uh, quite the opposite of what it was two decades ago. Like uh, people are like confused, like what am I, where am I gonna spend my time? And I don't have enough time. How can I find the gems I really care about? So I think those are some of the, the big macro trends, but uh, I'd just like to remind you that given that we have served a custom 
uh, electronics market, the residential system integrators for, uh, for over 16, 17 years now. Um, I, I personally think this is about the, as good a time as we've ever seen in terms of opportunities for this industry to uh, provide superior experiences for watching movies at home than ever before. Let me uh, follow up with you on that. A couple of uh, other trends I'll just throw out and try and get your comment on is this longer term effect that we might see come from the pandemic of fewer and fewer commercial theaters out there. And then um, also we're seeing already this tightening window between um, the theatrical release and the release to home cinema. Is that also those two trends, I think, are also going to feed home cinema. Would you agree? About a month ago, you probably noticed uh, a very uh, huge uh, agreement between uh, two major uh, brands, AMC and NBC Universal, with regards to what that theatrical window will be. Uh, for tentpole movies, if you're basically saying that the movie is going to be in the theaters for 17 days, and it's going to then make its move to home entertainment, that's phenomenal change that that just says that home entertainment is king and and more and more content is going to appear in home entertainment sooner so with all these stars aligning both the big slow gradual macro trends and then these more immediate ones what are the weak links out there that are still preventing integrators from selling a better home cinema experience to their customers with any project uh, the project is only as good as the weakest link. And typically what we've seen, uh, and, and, and we hear this mostly from our integrators, the best performing integrators, um, the electronic, uh, the reliability of electronic components have been phenomenal recently. So speakers don't fail, electronics don't fail. You know, your projectors and display devices, I mean, all of those are pretty, pretty good to the extent where people are like, why should I upgrade? So you have this, this opposite problem. Um, but when it comes to delivering a rich experience, um, the analogy that we use is uh, it's sort of like uh, if, you, if you invest in a race car, you, you better also pump some good rocket fuel for it. Otherwise, you're not going to get the full oomph, right? From, from your investment. And I think the weakest link in the chain for a home cinema more often than not happens to be the source. If, you ha if, you, if, you're, if you're really a, a home theater aficionado, if you're a, a home cinema enthusiast, uh, and you're willing to endure the friction associated with the purchase of a shiny disc and inserting the disc and playing back the disc, sure, you could have a great experience. But um, if you want that whole experience, including all the home automation cues and automated lighting controls and screen masking and the whole spiel, um, Kaleidoscape does that for you. So we typically find uh, that uh, if you don't address the weakest link, your overall experience degrades by virtue of the fact that you're just not giving your high performance sound and picture devices the necessary information. Does that make sense to you? It does, and as you mentioned it earlier about streaming and the proliferation of streaming, and obviously, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but <clears throat> maybe that, that elite home cinema has to have um, a streaming element for convenience if the customers want that with all the different services, 160 different streaming services. But if he really wants to watch, you know, Lawrence of Arabia or a classic or or, or even a newer film that's, that's uh, really tickling their fancy, they really have to go to the best source material. We have never uh, viewed streaming as an either or thing. You need that streaming device or the streaming app that you're using because no one service provider can give you every content in the world to your satisfaction. There's so much niche content. And uh, so I, I think you, you have to look at the addition of Kaleidoscape in a home cinema as a, uh, an investment to enjoy uh, cinematic experience the way the director intended for his audience. 
and, and no compromises, no excuses, and no blaming any outside factors such as internet bandwidth or whatever, the, whatever those reasons may be, right? We're saying, uh, how can we give you a performance guarantee that when you press play, you're going to watch the Lawrence of Arabia in as cinematic an experience as you possibly can. And it, it, this could be anything. It could be your most favorite, Star Wars. Whatever it is, you want to get pulled in uh, to, that, uh, to that film. And that's one of the reasons why Kaleidoscape has invested in aggregating um, lots of content related to uh, live concerts. And uh, when you watch Eric Clapton, uh, performing at the Royal Albert Hall. It's, it's so mind-blowing. I mean, it just feels like you were there. And that's because of the superior audio quality that we can give to the sound system. And uh, so I think, I think you're absolutely right. This is in addition to, as opposed to a substitute. And secondarily, I think, um, you know, our best customers are watching... Um, I don't know, 30 movies a year. But in general, I think long form content, if you're going to allocate the time for it, it's an experience, it's family time, it's friends, it's time with friends and social time. So why not enjoy it the best way possible? That's, that's our philosophy. Yeah, and I think with the pandemic, I can speak for our family. We have watched more movies in the last five months as a family than we have in a long time. It, because you kind of lose track of what day of the week it is to a certain extent. And I don't know, as they, somebody said Blur's Day the other day. I thought that was a great day of the week. Um, all right, let's, let me pick up on a little bit. You mentioned there about the audio element and, you know, how home cinema is more than just a category. It really does spur those referrals and, um, and that, that potential to make even more revenue and more money for an integrator. So how can they... How can they use this category, the home cinema, to really drive revenues and profits? I found that our best dealers and their best salespeople, or even our own best sales staff, um, you've got to have a love for home cinema. If you're going to sell something successfully, you have to be passionate about it. And uh, so it starts with a passion for what you sell because you believe in what you sell. It's not another project. Um, people who basically view uh, doing home cinema as a profitable business tend to basically exhibit a few um, common traits of success, I think, best business practices, if you will. I'm sure you could do some interviews with uh, our integrators who are really good at this stuff than me, but I'm going to at least summarize to you what I've heard and how, what's made us successful as a source supplier, a leading source supplier for the uh, home cinema projects uh, in the custom channel. The first has to do with uh, believing your eyes and ears, the power of a successful demonstration. This is not demo for demo's sake. This is demo that's like a believable demo. Like you believe in it and you're enjoying it and you're so mesmerized, you don't want the demo to end. That's a good sign. Then comes the, uh, the question like, I don't do demonstrations. No, I don't need to do demonstrations. Well, which is it? Um, I think once again, uh, absolutes are, are lies. So what you need to do is understand that you can give demonstration. Our successful dealers um, invest, maintain, upkeep a home cinema because that, that's where their passion is. Profits are basically simple, right? You, you, have, to, you have to command a, a good price that reflects value add that you bring to the table, uh, which means don't discount the crap out of the product. Uh, and uh, the second thing that you do is uh, you have to make sure that your expenses are under control. And uh, the way you keep the expenses under control is predictability of how to complete a project and time bounding it and really dealing with a few brands that really matters. And the way you control your revenues and the top line is uh, you focus on value add and uh, 
I think a lot of people tend to focus on price as opposed to what you can get for the investment that you are making in a home cinema. It's an emotional sale and you cannot, if you can't drive an emotional sale uh, and you're gonna think that discounting is gonna achieve that, uh, I, I don't think that's a good strategy. Yeah, what would be some good takeaways for, for the viewers who are watching this on ideas on how they can really uh, be more successful selling the category? I know you had mentioned some ideas about movie nights in your showroom and, and uh, just even things like adding immersive audio uh, to uh, your, your, your offering, those sorts of things that really can engage the customer with that emotional relevance. This is an emotional sale and emotional sales need to have that emotional relevance component. And uh, that means um, not asking a customer what brands they prefer or how big their screen should be or what kind of uh, experience they're looking for. Um, I think trying to understand their pain factors. Uh, the pain factors could be um, spending way too much time uh, browsing and cruising for content in different channels and not finding something they like. Uh, that's a real problem these days compared to what used to be uh, a major problem of not finding something at all because it wasn't available uh, 10 years ago. 4K Ultra HD refers to resolution. It does not say anything about picture quality. And so, you know, and uh, you know, you could look good and you could have a sucky character, right? Kind of like the character part, you're not gonna find out unless you really sort of, you know, work with this person or, uh, or, or spend time with the person. The picture quality stuff is very similar. You, you, gotta, you, you will appreciate good picture quality when you see one. And when you've never seen one, you probably think that I've never had a problem. So Kaleidoscape, um, we invest so much in trying to deliver that spectacular picture quality. I mean, we're like four to 12 times better in picture quality. And like you said, with, uh, with, with things, technologies like Atmos and DTS, uh, X, you are, you're dealing with uh, sound quality that is superior. I mean, we're like 25 to 50 times better in, in sound processing. And that's because of the, uh, the, um, the incredible uh, audio information that we are able to package with every movie that we deliver. So I think when it comes to uh, sort of giving people an opportunity to get more convicted about what they're selling, the best thing to do would be to ask whether they see a difference in enjoying movies at home from a Ultra HD Blu-ray disc, for example. And if you don't, you're going to find it very difficult to sell, right? Another thing is uh, if you don't like to do demos, because demos tend to be very compressed, uh, and you have a very nice showroom, there is no reason why you can't invite a client for a movie night, you know, and let them experience what it's like to watch movie uh, in, a, in a beautifully done home cinema. So that's another um, uh, investment that you can make. And you should listen carefully to their viewing habits. What kind of content? You have to ask so many more questions related to content because you mentioned earlier, uh, how can you make this more emotionally relevant a sale. Well, what drives emotion is content. <laughs> and so to understand content, you have to ask questions related to the kinds of content that, that they enjoy. Some might like documentaries, much more so than action-packed movies. Some might like uh, sci-fi, much more so than romantic comedies. So really understanding and then giving them the possibility to enjoy a content that they love in a home cinema experience, I think would seal it. So you've got to, you've got to be clever about it. Uh, I've seen dealers also do a very nice home cinema and then use uh, their demo system uh, to do a uh, show and tell in a residence.
So rather than basically have a, um, a showroom, uh, you could go to the home that you've done, and this could be a post-project completion uh, sale where you could talk about the weakest link. And then you can demonstrate and convince the client that this is a beautiful addition uh, to everything else that they have done. So there's some thoughts. I'm sure uh, there are others out there, but um, I think uh, content is king. Uh, Kaleidoscape uh, has uh, content license from over 45 different studios now. So I think, uh, I think content diversity is important. Content quality is important. Content that matters to you, finding the gems you like uh, is important uh, in, an, in an effortless way. Those are all some of the things that we do. And uh, these are not data sheet material. These are emotional uh, experience sale uh, issues. And I think uh, to the extent that our channel can get more experience driven in home cinema sale, I think there's just so much opportunity. We're talking multiple billions of dollars uh, worth of opportunities. And I think it's go they're going to realize it. I think they're already seeing it based on the conversations that I'm having with the dealers. And just to clarify for anybody who's watching, when, when Chin is referring to poor source material, he's not talking about Adam Sandler movies necessarily. So it's, uh, it's much deeper than that. Um, but I'm going to have to leave it at that. Um, for anybody who wants to um, visit the Kaleidoscape booth during CDF Virtual Expo, you go to cdexpovirtual.com and in the search function right up in the corner you can just type in kaleidoscape and you'll be able to find them and you can also go to the expo hall pull down and kaleidoscape will be right there so china thanks for joining ce pro today on our fireside chat well thank you jason i appreciate your uh, time today